Hi, good afternoon, and I thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Mary Fox Alter. I'm the superintendent of schools for Pleasantville. I'm also the president of the Chief School Association for Westchester County, and I sit on the executive board of the Lower Hudson Council of School Superintendents. Um, on a personal level, I'm a mom. I, um, I'm a daughter of um, two Irish immigrants who didn't get beyond an eighth grade education. Um, I have six siblings, two that live in Manhattan, two that live in Queens, one that lives in Long Island, and my mother, God bless her, a tough Irish woman who worked in the kitchens of the city schools. When I told her that I was going to be testifying in front of you, she said with a thick brogue, I can't believe one of us is there, Mary. So you have no idea how exciting this is. I also do want to reach out to Ken Wagner. I went up to Ken and I asked him to stay um, yep, for my testimony. So here. Ken, I really do appreciate that. It, it'll save you a meeting, Ken, all right? And you will hear part of what I'm saying. So you'll have a primer ahead of time. Um, and I also will say, um, Ms. Nolan, your comment about how um, the commissioner and the deputy commissioners, the, there's this constant conversation out there and they're getting the same answer. You know, I'm a lead evaluator. I evaluate teachers. My lesson plan observation of these people would be, you know what, you're teaching the quadratic equation and you're using the exact same language and the kids keep missing it up on the test. You got to differentiate instruction. You have to figure out different language because none of us are hearing it. Regardless of whether or not you like the answer or not, give us an answer that we understand because the answers aren't there. Just a quick correction, Ken Wagner testified that the contracts with the data dashboard vendors um, are in place. Specifically, what is not in place is SED approval of the data security policies of the data dashboard vendors. That's an integral part of the contractual relationship and must be finalized um, through the enforceable contracts agreements. And also another clarification. Um, in another life, I used to teach AP computer science. I taught many computer courses. I was a technology director. I get technology. Let me be perfectly clear. We use three par third party vendors, but we use them in separate servers, inside of our firewalls, inside of um, a, a, an intranet, if you will, not an internet. There's a distinct difference on how we go about using them. Um, I know. Um, Many people have said, and you have my written testimony there, I um, forgot to put my cover sheet on it, so <laughs> my name is Mary. Um, uh, last, uh, last month, the Pleasantville Board of Education joined many other boards of education when we passed a resolution to withdraw from Race to the Top in order to protect our children's privacy. I'm sure you are aware that we heard very loudly and clearly we had strong public uh, support for this action. We also heard loudly and clearly from other districts who felt they had no choice. They could not opt, opt out of Race to the Top to protect student privacy because doing so would bring financial distress to those districts. They must select a data dashboard. Um, and when the State Education Department says we're close to 70% compliance on this issue, um, please be assured that it was done because many felt they had no other choice but to select one. Um, the privacy and security assurances by Inbloom and New York State Education Department do nothing to assuage the fear and allay the anxiety over this issue. SED and Inbloom responses to these concerns include statements like, they already do this, school districts already share information with third party vendors. These responses are simplistic at best and distracting at worst. All public school districts in New York State use our intranet with state ed servers and firewalls. We all know that. The concern over in Bloom and its massive upload into an internet cloud cannot be poo-pooed away with comments that are, we already do it, your data is better, it has super encryption. They're disrespectful and meant to be distractors, um, which is away from the real issue, which is the use of our children's data elements as profit centers and data mining. Uh, state Ed and in Bloom state the intention of in Bloom is to create individual and personalized learning environments for students, their families, and to provide tech-driven solutions to teachers. At first blush, they seem innocuous enough, and I like so many speakers did a much better job of capturing oh, this you're, language. You're doing a great job. We're, oh. we're loving everything you have to say. As a matter of fact, I got I want to make sure the hearings. 
I got to this is a, I feel like I'm Go. responding to class. Please, we got a really great speaker here. I got to ask for some from, okay, thanks. Okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, at first blush, these claims seem innocuous Sorry. enough. They invoke things, why not? Great use of 21st century technology. However, they don't address and accomplish the goals and will violate privacy rights and profile students in their attempt to do so. If you look closely at the information State Ed shares on the Common Core indicators, you will see that the content does not closely link individual student learning needs with learning strategies, information, or standards. The indicators are broad and at best they allow for generic instruction solutions. In order for real learning to take place, there has to be great interaction between teacher and child and real knowledge of a child and how that child learns. They must be embedded into the learning environment. So therefore, if the current information from New York State Education Department lacks the quality of meaningful instruction, why should I trust that the next level through their data dashboards will render anything that will have strong pedagogical impact? It's also important for the members of our elected to body to know that there is one very important, extremely important piece of data that New York State will not allow us to see, that will not be part of the 400 elements, will not be something parents, students, and teachers can see, and it is probably the most important data element for data-driven instructions. We are not allowed to see the three through eight ELA math tests. We're not allowed to see the tests themselves. The tests that are going to generate all this information for this data-driven instruction, we can't see them. The data for the personalized learning environment it is data dark. The analogy I'll make to you is this. Can you imagine you're given the results of a pond study and you're allowed to see the pH of the water, the chlorination, you're told the water is green. You're reading all these and then asked to make a conclusion. A smart person would say, I'd like to go down and test the water and I'd like to actually see the instruments we're testing. Well, state ed has told us we can't do that and they were told that because it's too expensive for them to do that. That answer is absolutely ludicrous, and the fact that the tests themselves are not part of the data that is being shared with kids, parents, and teachers. I cannot tell a child why that child got a three on the exam. I'm not allowed to even see it. At a recent hearing at the State Senate Education um, Committee, Mark Schneiderman, who represents the Software and Information Industry Association, stated that student data should be made available so that technology companies can meet the personalized learning needs of students through digital products. He also stated that he did not believe parents should be given permission for student data to be released because then stu some students would miss the opportunity for personalized learning. Many of you have already heard about how we feel, and I know um, this committee understands that learning is a personalized um, environment and the use of data can inform it, but it cannot replace it. It cannot replace the human interaction, whether it's a software app, a computer game. Um, and if you look at the State Ed's um, PowerPoint presentation about the shared learning instruction, you will see right off on the side, it's a little bubble that says a place for computer apps. So again, we know where this is going. Um, the, course, the point about data mining um, is mentioned in last week's, I don't know if any of you saw it, in Education Week where McKinsey and company were quoted that creating more open and transparent data in education from both public and private sources could unlock between $900 billion and $1.2 trillion in annual economic value worldwide, about a third of it in the United States. And again, I repeat, our kids and their data elements are not profit centers for corporate America. My concern that all of this will lead to student profiling, predicting how a kid will do before you even got to see them. We believe that the complete educational record of every student should be confidential and protected, and we're asking for this body's endorsement of that belief. Individual student identified data should not leave the public school system. It should not be transferred electricity, uh, electronically outside of our internet, and it should be on our own servers to keep there. Personalized learning in the digital world can lead to an oversimplification of the learning process, and it can direct parents, teachers, and students to activities that are not matched to their interests and needs. 
I caution state ed and this elected body to be keenly aware of educational research that informs technology integration, the UCLA study, and there are many others out there. Um, as I try to process state ed's position on this issue, I find myself reflecting upon a quote from Jeff Wilson, the Massachusetts Deputy Commissioner of Education, when discussing student data in Bloom. He said, this is still in the research and development stage. It's not ready for prime time. What does Massachusetts know that we don't? I have nine suggestions that I think are solutions to our current situation. First, I think we need a mid-course correction. State ed needs to apply for a waiver from the federal government. Many others have done so. Um, and I have no idea why state ed has not. It's the right thing to do right now. When officials apply for the waiver, the legislature needs to adopt certain changes to 3012C to help organizations with that waiver. My superintendent's group has vowed our support in procurement of that. In the true science of data-driven instru data instruction, all tests and assessments used to measure student performance must be made public and protected by the Freedom of Information Act. We need to be able to tell a child, his or her family, and his or her teacher why they obtained the score they did. New York State Education Department needs to send all contracts on in Bloom the Data Dashboard Initiative to Robert Freeman, the Executive Director of the Committee on Open Education. State Ed should also vet the decision to hold confidential all the grade assessments through his office. As a public branch of our state government, State Ed needs to ensure that engaging the Committee on Open Government is part of the process. New York State Legislature should pass stronger student protection privacy options. They need to ensure that the protections that were eroded in the 2008 federal change to FERPA are brought back. These changes allow parties with a legitimate educational interest to have access to data. We should pass legislation that requires a parental opt-out. New York State Education Department's implementation documents should clearly outline that no race to the top districts will not have personally identification information uploaded as without a data dashboard, there is no technology infrastructure for the release of this information. And this was asked earlier by one of the assembly people, but it wasn't answered by um, the commissioner. On page nine, item 3.8 of the New York State Education Service Agreement signed on September 27, 2012, it states that if a school district decides they no longer wish to use the shared learning infrastructure, they may request that the district student data be deleted from the data store. We know now that the SLI is in bloom and we want clear guidance from New York State Ed for public schools to enact this provision. State Ed should seek information from New York State public school districts regarding the levels of data-driven instruction each district has. State Ed should ensure whether or not an individual district has already met the New York State requirements under this initiative. If a district already has a parent portal, an early warning tracking system, and gives the parents all the information they need, if it already monitors students without disabil with disabilities and attendance, then in Bloom and the data dashboard is a waste of taxpayer money. Districts that meet the intent of the law should be exempt and funds for this redundant system should be spent on districts in need and on children of poverty. In Bloom should be restructured to thwart any data, data mining activities. This can be accomplished by abolishing the vendors and then giving funds to districts to set up their own parent portals. In Bloom should also state they will not collect information through web tracking tools or other web tools that is found on um, the In Bloom website. Items number two and three on InBloom's privacy statement must be rewritten so that data mining activities do not take place. It, it is there that they can. If state ed is truly interested in protecting student privacy, this should not be an issue. A firewall needs to be established between students' data and the vendors. And lastly, state ed needs to give the system and process full scrutiny and not on their own. They must appeal to the United States federal government over these issues to slow this down, and it should set up a public oversight board. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I very much want to hear your colleague. I just should say very quickly, one, I hope that Arnie Duncan will listen to you next time he makes the comments about suburban moms, and two, if you'd like to apply to be chancellor of the New York City school system, I wasn't with de Blasio, I was with Quinn because the Irish girls stick together, but I'd be happy to put your name forward if you wanted to take probably a big pay cut to run the city system. Thank you. Obviously, you, you have yet 
But Ms. Nolan, clearly, she knows something about education, so she's not qualified for the last 12 years to run our school. Wait a minute. Before you give away my superintendent, we like her pleasure. Very dynamic. And thank you so much. And please send regards to that mother of yours if she's still working in New York City school system. She's 83. She worked until she was 72. All my aunts did that. All my aunts did that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.